looking at, and he he kind of laid everybody out. I mean, there were three people on that play, Dave, that Tariq Woolen's just kind of hanging around, as you talked about, and he talked about it there. Bit up on second and nine on a play fake, which they just do not run, and they did not run there. But there's Tariq Woolen just kind of in no man's land. His feet are kind of just moving in place, and he's looking around like, all right, which direction should I go? And meanwhile, you got you got Kittle leaking out behind him, and then well, and Julian Love's Julian Love footed, yeah, and then and he tries to get he tries to get a jam on him and misses, yeah. So then that puts him in even a worse like he's almost lunged. And now. then Quandre at the end, maybe it was a bad angle. It looks the attempt looked very half hearted. It looked kind of like oh, couldn't get it. It was just a weird play, and there were three guys I thought you could point to on that one that looked particularly bad yeah on that on that play but pete and and look you know if they stop that play if they stop that play i don't maybe they run something else but i mean to me i i think it's almost encouraging how blatant these mistakes were like it's not like well sometimes when this guy gets that read you know it kind of messes with his read a little bit we'll clean it up but this and that it's like no they don't run the freaking ball on second and nine Okay, so why are you taking a step towards the line of scrimmage? And does it happen to to just one guy? No, it happens to two. It happens to to Julian Love, who's really had a good game, stripping the ball, getting an interception. But yeah, it just it should not happen to a guy who is a veteran and that's been studying. Rick Woolen, I don't know what's going on with him, you know. And I think maybe it's a shoulder, but I I think that. You know, for for a guy like Julian Love, do I hate Julian Love? No, I think he's the great one of the great guys on that team. But like, come on, man. Yeah. Come on, you can't you can't make that mistake, especially against. And then you know it's on George Kittle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I, I'll say this: Ayuk, Christian McCaffrey, Kittle, and Debo Samuel all combined for 441 yards. But so they have lots of weapons. But it's George Kittle. Yeah. Come on, man. And you're a safety, and you're a you know, more of a cover safety than a load up in the box safety. You've got to match up with him and you have to cover him. Did you, is it fair to point to Quandre at the end of that play? Or do you feel like that was? Yeah. I mean, look, I think he could have made a play. He could have made it's something. Just, it at just the end. seemed like kind of a whiff, like kind of like, let me just offer at him. Oh, I didn't get him. It was just a weird moment. It just, the whole play was bad. Yeah. But you, you mentioned the three guys. Yeah. 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 And and Pete talking about that and that it was not just that play, certainly, and it was not just those three guys. Jamal was out there. You had it was just a collective and Pete very often doesn't name names, but he, he did did hear. It's Debo coming across on a on a deep cross right you know, right to Jamal. That's something that we've seen and we work on. It's a regular concept and that never should happen, particularly in third and thirteen or third and eleven, whatever it was. And then the other one is is on the, the right side when Kittle gets behind us on that. We saw that happen last year and we corrected all of that through our training and our discipline of our footwork, our deep third play by the corner, and he didn't do it right. He didn't do it right. You know, he got caught in the play fake. He's not supposed to be part of the play fake. And so we give them a touchdown. And they execute it. They throw it and catch it. They give them all the credit. But that should never even have been a, a decision to throw. He should never even throw that ball. So that's what's frustrating because we're that close. So we, the guy's got to do it right in the moment. You know, you got to do it right in the moment. We got to practice cleaner, better for Jamal. We got to make sure that he's getting his reps in, in practice that that he can execute and get the timing. Uh, Reek's got to make his play. That's just one. It's a disciplined play. You do play after play after play. And it's unfortunate, you know. And so we have to do a better job of, of making them aware of how crucial it is to do right. Yeah. So let me ask you this, Bob. I'll ask you, and I'll let's uh, poll the, the texters that, you know, those are two plays that he's talking about. Were they playing so poorly that if they fix those two plays, there's just going to be another one that's coming? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like that's that's the way that the that they're playing. That you know, if the if you you fix one thing, okay, well then they they don't understand. I mean, there was more than just those two plays. There was the deep, there was also the deep crosser from uh, from Debo Samuel. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, and I don't know how the the Tectors uh, will fill eight six six nine seven nine three seven seven six. Is this defense just so broken? Uh, to me, I have a hard time believing that it's that broken that if you did fix that play then you would just go and screw up another play um uh, to me i feel like we're, we're a little bit closer than that and then the other thing is you know and you said this yesterday well we've been talking about the the defense all year and you're right 
I felt like this was different just because they were so freaking obvious. Yeah. It was so obvious what was what was wrong. Now, I'll, I'll say this. The very first run, the 75-yard run, there's a lot of, you could say almost five, six guys, <laughs> right? It was and it, just... it wasn't nearly as clear. Like when I was groaning about running under blocks on the one, I don't know, it was like a 20-yard run by McCaffrey. Like that was that was obvious. You you know you who was at fault? Yeah, that was uh, Derek Taylor gets. Uh, I'm Darryl. sorry, Daryl Taylor. Yeah, I got it. Daryl Taylor <laughs> gets turned on the line of scrimmage, and then you got two linebackers, Bobby and Jordan, running underneath blocks, which I don't see Jordan doing hardly ever. Yeah, and so yeah, that was very obvious. By, um, by the way, quickly, we had somebody who texted this in yesterday. Explain what you mean when you say they're running under blocks. Yeah, we talked about that on, on the on the radio as well so you know during the broadcast when i say that a, a lot actually but unfortunately but if i'm supposed to hit he's coming towards me i'm supposed to hit his left shoulder with my left shoulder and control that gap and instead of doing that i go underneath him meaning go around his right side and try to get it's kind of going under it's like you're you're slipping it you know instead of taking the guy on and going over the top and getting in your gap you're going to try to get in your gap by faking him out by going the other way going to the left so you're kind of going the long way yeah yeah you're totally going the, the wrong way and i used to draw it up on the board for my kids when i coached and like the guy is going outside and upfield and so to get him you're going to go inside and the opposite way, basically. Yeah, you're kind of going around. Yeah, it's almost like if yeah. you put the two together, it would be a circle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's just that. Those are the kinds of things that that get me, get me going. And I, I feel like, yeah, that's pretty. Like I always tell the story when I went to Denver, I went under a block, made a tackle in practice. Guy's like, can't do that. And I'm like, I was told that if I make the play, and he's like, all right, you better make the play, or you're going to stand on the sidelines next to me. That's that's the kind of thing that we need to get back to.